Today, Joe is going to walk through what he's got set up and how he takes photos in the studio for a photo studio. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey. It's me, Javier. We are here at the Chive. Hello. Oh, I bet I can look really cool if I'm like, because this is like one of those beauty lights. But it's not about me today. It's about this guy, Joe, yes. Mr. Head Photographer. I like how even with the lighting that you have on right now, if you mm -hmm. just put the camera anywhere, it's like, oh, look at that lighting. Does it look good? Yeah, for sure. Nice. It's That's how you know what he's doing. All right, cool. This is a studio setup um, that we're doing for some hard goods today. It's not super complicated. It might look kind of complicated for someone uh, not in photography um, or if um, you're just kind of starting out in photography. We have our studio lights right here. Um, we're running with two studio lights. We have a couple of Profoto 500 watt strobes. This one is fixed with a giant Ellen, Ellen Chrome softbox, um, which is one of my favorites, super soft. Um, so this is the one that we primarily use here. Uh, we also have a uh, Profoto um, 2x3 softbox over here, just giving it a little bit of fill, um, making sure that the background is nice and lit. For our camera setup, we have a Canon 5D Mark III. It's uh, fixed with the Canon 24-105 um, f4.0. Uh, I have it stopped to, uh, to f, um, f8, uh, just so everything is gonna be in focus. And I guess I won't go over settings, that's maybe a little too complicated. <laughs> Would you explain what you, what you were telling me before? So I had yeah. never seen this before, but it seems mm -hmm. super efficient. Yeah, totally. So this is um, a tethered setup. So this is something that you'll use in kind of like certain situations. If you want to uh, view your photos as you're taking them on the computer screen, because they're kind of small on the back of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you um, just a better idea of what the photos are gonna look like once you finally load them into the computer. It also is great if you're um, shooting headshots or you're working with models. Uh, that way the models or the person that's you're taking the, the headshot of can kind of like see what they look like and they can make adjustments and you can kind of talk through with the person uh, small adjustments uh, to get the photo that you're looking for. Awesome. Can you, so you were explaining before we got on how mm -hmm. uh, you literally, you, all you got to do is plug it straight from the camera into, the, yeah, into there. Was there any like drivers or anything that you had to download or no. is it just... Canon, no, it. not at all. Um, what's cool is I think it, it might be an issue like with Lightroom and Photoshop where they have the compatibility when you update your uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, your Adobe products, that it, it comes with all that installed basically. But really it's a super simple setup. You just need to buy the tether cable, um, which is really just a, a USB cable that runs from the camera to the computer. This one is orange, which is actually on purpose uh, so that people don't trip on it. Uh, especially in a studio with a lot of things going on, a lot of stuff in the way, it's really important that you know everyone's like safe on set. Um, so really, just uh, you plug it directly into the computer through Lightroom. Uh, there's some different programs you can use to uh, to tether with, but uh, with Lightroom, it's a super simple setup. So you just tether the camera to the computer with the cable. Do a new folder. We'll do test, and then just have a spot for our raw files. So right there, and then within Lightroom, we can then file, tethered capture, start tethered capture. Um, we can then choose that, so test and then raw. Bam, choose. Um, it's gonna show that it's, uh, this is the sample file name right here. You can change the way that the file names go in. So you can say, okay, this is hard good shoot number one, two, and it'll go in sequential order. Um, you, can, you can play around with this, but there's a bunch of different ways to do it. But basically this is just gonna do the straight out of the camera file names with the, uh, the raw uh, file name afterwards. What's really cool about this setup too is sometimes if you have the camera in a really weird spot where it's hard to fire the camera, mm -hmm. you can either use um, a, a cable to fire the camera or you can fire the camera directly from Lightroom, which is actually, it's super Super handy in certain situations. It's also pretty fun, mm -hmm. um, where all you do is it has this little tethered um, dialog box down here, and you can press that, and it should fire away. That's so awesome. What's really cool is that. Oh, it even shows up on the. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so it should show up there, and then on the computer screen, uh, this is the this is the file that we just shot. Um, Boom. So and it's saved in the computer. Yep. 
super efficient. Yeah, exactly. So it's already saved within that, that raw folder. And you can full screen it so you can see uh, kind of what's going on. And it'll refresh as every, you're taking... time, every time you take a photo. <laughs> That's awesome. Another question I was going to ask is, what's the reasoning behind um, why are you shooting it this way? So if I show you here in terms of why is the tripod this far away from the subject matter on like white like what was the decision behind shooting it that way oh gotcha um so i threw it on a tripod because i wanted a consistent shot every time i wanted to just make i wanted to make small like minute um changes to the composition of the uh of the hard goods themselves mm -hmm. uh, just to change the shot like in little ways without having to then recompose and come up with the exact same shot every time mm -hmm. um, i'm also shooting on a bit of a telephoto so it's pretty close to uh to i think it's all the way up to 105. Um, so that's the reason for why it's as far away from the subject as it is because I wanted it to be far enough away where I could zoom all the way in, get some compression, which is basically is that what, what that's called. called? Yeah, exactly. I, did, I didn't know that. Like when I, I just think of terms like a uh, shallow depth of field, but that's just in terms of like your aperture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it, has, it has a pretty, um, I guess, high or low aperture, whichever way you want to think about it. So it's on f8 so that everything's going to be in focus, but um, the compression, it kind of, it gets rid of some of the barrel distortion, so it'll kind of compress the, uh, the subject inward a little bit, it'll make it look nice and pretty. It'll also pull the background closer to it. Whenever you have a telephoto lens and you zoom in further, the background pulls in closer to the subject. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of some of the reasoning why. Um, so it's just, it's stylistic choices. Yeah, and I'm assuming, is it, so if your camera is like sitting like this, just for, mm -hmm. do you not, well actually just seeing this in camera, it doesn't look as cool. You don't have as flat of an image. You exactly. just have, you have, yep. you have uh, I don't know, you, it just doesn't look as cool. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. guess I guess you can come up with more terminology, but in yeah. terms of like, so showing it in camera, here's this, and then backing up, and zooming in, it, yep. it's like what you were saying with a flat image. Exactly, and that's that's just like a good um, a good example so of cool. like what barrel distortion is. So every lens, when you um, I, well with the zoom lenses, uh, like specifically when it's zoomed all the way out, it has a lot generally has a lot of like barrel distortion, or it'll it'll look it'll have that wide angle effect to it. Um, so it'll it'll kind of. Uh, create this look where it kind of spreads out like fish eyes in front of you mm -hmm. So the way to get rid of that in a lot of ways is to step back zoom in so everything kind of tightens in all together Yeah, I, I think I use the same technique when um Try and show myself uh, When you're trying to shoot like an interview like shooting down a street mm -hmm. like if you have somebody Kind of with a, a vanishing point and mm -hmm. put them like at the center of the vanishing point shooting down and then you zoom all the way in it just mm -hmm. gives that compression but i think it looks cooler shooting something like that than if you're up on your face then you're like oh hey we're on youtube doing mm -hmm. this like anybody can do that but if you mm -hmm. take the time to get a setup shot that's farther away like mm -hmm. such then you do those things anyhow this has been tips with joe tips and guy that Ask the questions, Javier. What's your, what's your Insta? I have an Instagram, though. Yeah. Uh, it's Joseph O'Day, so J-O-S-E-P-H, and then O-D-E-A on Instagram. I'll link it in the description. Thanks, Joe. Cool. Thanks. Whoa. Whoa. I hope you found that informational for anybody that likes to shoot photo. I do video all the time, but, you know, sometimes it's good to get the, the photo side of things. I am doing daily content for the month of November and I hope you guys if you've been seeing some of the videos are liking them um, if not then still like it anyway uh, if you like this video go ahead and subscribe and like and check out Joe's stuff on Instagram he's a cool guy all right till tomorrow see you guys